What's up everyone? Charles, MX Revival, MXRevival.com. Today we're going to take a little deeper look into the Dirt Bike Magazine CR500 build. I have a pretty massive to-do list on the CR500 today. First and foremost, I need to crack into this engine, see the condition inside, check some things out, and get it ready to send out to Adam Millar of Canada. Adam owns MRE Racing, and he was most recently on the cover of Motocross Action Magazine. Maybe you guys saw his bike. He did a 2016 KTM frame. They stuffed a CR500 engine into it. I'm stoked to have him on board. He's been massaging CR500 engines for years and years. So Adam, if you're watching, thanks bro. This is gonna be amazing. In addition to breaking that engine, down and getting it ready for Adam. I need to get into the suspension. I need to break this stuff down as well. But the forks are in pretty good shape. Overall, the shocks in pretty good shape as well, but I need to break these down for SGB Racing back east. They're located in Maine. Linked up with Jason, the owner of SGB back east. He's gonna be taking care of all of the coatings for the suspension. I'm extremely excited about that. I have some special coatings going on, some revalves. Get these bikes ready for a magazine ride day. Finally got to meet Jason at the Oakland Supercross. It's been amazing watching him put his team together and watch the boys give it their all. If you guys head out to any of the supercross races this year make sure to stop by the sgb tent and say hey so once the engine's broken down the suspension's broken down and everything's ready to go out i gotta get into the frames next i need to make sure these are completely degunked all the foot pegs removed things like that get this ready for apex coatings apex coatings is located in monterey california ran by a great guy named jared he also owns elusive graphics and another vehicle wrap company he's a super ambitious guy he's got his hands full grateful to have his support once again he also helped us out last year with the cr250 giveaway bike we did jared specializes in sear coat and powder coat and we are just getting started on this bike guys if i hadn't mentioned it in the previous video the cr500 we went ahead and decided to call this project ping king i was inspired to name the bike project ping king after doing a ton of internet browsing and sort of finding the period correct look for this bike. It's a little before my time, the 1990 CR500. In order to round out today's video, I need to start cleaning things, degunking them, taking bearings out of swing arms and such. I'll be using a giant 102 quart cooking pot. I'm going to make my own sort of hot bath for these parts. I've been told by not one, but two guys that the secret to getting parts super clean is a mixture of simple green and Dawn dish soap. I've never tried it, considering the fact that one of the guys is Clint Lund from Lund MX, who's Entic Naps mechanic, and the other guy is fast enough to be on a factory team, I should probably take their advice. And I think it should really cut cleaning time in half. Dirt Bike Magazine, we're coming for you. All right, guys, we jumped into the old first person shooter mode. I got the rig set up here on the chest. I got another camera over here on standby. I have a couple different angles for you. Hopefully that turns out all right. I'm particularly excited about this today because I get to try out my new Metro Lakes engine stand. I think it's awesome. You can pop the uh, bumpers up here. It'll rotate uh, 360. I need to build some sort of a platform up on this cart so it can actually do that all the way but excited to use it you can pull this pin over here and actually rotate this sucker and i've never had a nice engine stand so this is really cool and you know it's good for dropping in transmissions or whatever and pulling things apart it's like a third or maybe even a fourth set of hands so pretty pumped on that comes with all these little wing nuts and different arms and brackets to adjust the engine however you like so anyways we're gonna go ahead and start by popping the cylinder head off and then the jug and i'm starting to think already that probably biting off a little more than i can chew doing the suspension the engine and the frames today plus cleaning everything so we'll probably break that into some other videos but nothing wrong with a little more entertainment i personally hate long videos none of these are moving the impact's not the right tool for the job right now we'll swap over to the regular ratchet man these are all extremely tight it's going to be an issue to try and overcome with a cart on wheels well, there we go go ahead and start breaking all these loose holy crap actually using the uh ratchet and then a little bit of a leverage action here that's helping but they are unbelievably tight maybe it's just due to age i am already loving this engine stand you guys can check these out on the website if you want pretty awesome got some better photos of it and as mentioned this is my first time using it i'm super pumped on it so nice all right we're back in impact mode here now that we have everything broke free nice little tray down there i'm notorious for getting too excited and not draining the oil out of things before i pull engines so maybe i'll drain the oil into it and there we go how's she looking in there pretty standard 
All right, that's step one. So now we need to bust out the old 14 millimeter wrench for these guys here. I would imagine that the nuts are uh, every bit as tight as the heads were. So got another double action wrench, still not getting it done. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little heat on those. That's absurd. Let's go ahead and try that again. <laughs> there we go. That's a little better. Oh, now we can do the other side. Check this out. All right, all the nuts are loose. Just locked back into position and upright. I like to shock the jug sometimes, get it loose. We can see that uh, stuff's been pretty crusty so far. So there's a lot of corrosion on these cylinder studs. I'm gonna try and creep a little bit of uh, WD-40 down in there because I think this is our main holdup right now. Got it to crack a little tiny bit, but not quite enough. And uh, it hasn't gotten any easier, so. Let that work its way in there. Go ahead and keep tapping on it. Eventually it's gonna come free. This thing is putting up a fight. I've been working this thing for about 15 minutes. Heat, WD, shocking it with the rubber mallet. And that's all I've gotten. About a 16th inch gap on both sides. So we'll get it. Oh yeah, we're getting there. We are firmly stuck on these alignment dowels that go over the cylinder studs and uh, it's just taking a while. So probably could have used something a little better than WD-40, maybe like a PB blaster, although may not have mattered. Anyhow, heat, oil, a rubber mallet, and just some consistency are really paying off. I'm also pulling the drug here as I shock it and slowly but surely it's working. All right, we did it. We finally got the last shock that made it jump up off of the lower cases. So we're gonna go ahead and separate this now. That was an extreme fight. I have never been wrestled so hard on a cylinder. So neither two nor four, four stroke. Just age, I guess. She's old. And try not to let the rod hit when the piston falls out. Oh yeah, this thing's got some grooves in it that I can actually feel. Damn, a little more than just superficials. Look at the size of that freaking piston. That thing's a monster. I think I already told you guys, this is the first CR500 or 500 in general that I've dove into, so that's pretty cool. I win, bitch. Definitely seen some better days in there. In fact, it would appear that this has actually been re-sleeved before. Let's see if we can get some better light for you guys. You can see the difference in materials right here. The sleeves are iron and the cylinders, of course, are aluminum. You can see that the ports were actually shaved right here to match the sleeve also. That means that this thing has been blown up once at least or needed to be serviced at one point or another. And uh, I thought I was gonna get into that when I saw this edge up here, but I wasn't sure if it was just discoloration from being ratty, crusty, and old. But anyways, so uh, despite the bike looking really nice on the outside, um, it's definitely been uh, blown up once or serviced in that regard once. And this uh, sleeve is no different. It's actually pretty worn out too. So that's all right, we'll take care of it. Take a look at how crusty these alignment dowels are also. This is what was fighting me. Obviously they are completely rusted out. Those are steel and of course, dissimilar metals, age, steel, aluminum, rust. It's just a good time. All right, we need to get the piston off of the connecting rod here. So a couple of rags and then let this thing just sit down in the bore there. As you guys can see, there's a little relief right here and there's a, a circlip inside. So this is what holds the piston in on the wrist pin. So you need to just use like a little pick or something like this, a little precision screwdriver and get that circlip out. They will fly across the garage. So shield your eyes and take your time. There you go, there's the circlip. Now you can roll the engine over and do the same thing to the other side. Got to pull the circlip out of this groove as well. Now sometimes the wrist pin will be stuck in here and you need to drive it out. When that happens, I like to use a socket, uh, just a socket that's a little bit smaller, like a deep socket, and you can actually tap it through and get the wrist pin to drive out. We're gonna do that right now. So my weapon of choice ended up being a 12 millimeter socket. I'm gonna hold the back side of the piston with my hand here and my fingers are gonna hold the socket up. I'm just gonna sort of Drive that thing out. 
We've run out of real estate, so I'm gonna drop an extension in there and finish the job. Done deal. This thing is not looking too hot. Lots of scoring here. Actually looks really bad. These are like, uh, you know, you can feel them. Usually you get some superficials where there's some scoring lines and you can't feel them, but this one, I'm not sure if that's due to uh, improperly matched piston to the bore. These rings actually have flat spots in them and you can see that these lines in the piston crown around the edge are just totally gone or rubbed off. So something was definitely not right in there. So we got the pieces of the fallen over here gathering on the bench and I thought of something worth mentioning and basically maybe these lines were caused due to improper ring gap. I'm not sure, but basically there is a gap in the ring on the ends and when you install these there should be a certain measurement in thousandths gap left over and you basically do that by taking a ring and sticking it down inside of the bore. You usually stick this into the bore, into the area about an inch down. And you use the piston to make sure it's in the bore straight, do, do like so. Then you're actually able to measure that gap on the end of the rings there. Now, if there isn't enough gap while the part is cold, as the engine heats up and the ring expands, the ends come towards each other and then they end up touching and they still need to expand. I don't know if that's what happened, but um, basically every two stroke, uh, you know, you need to measure the ring end gap. And so maybe, maybe not. I got impatient with this one, gave it a little bend and see you later, babe. Another at home test guys do to check the crank and see if it's good or not is they take the crank in their hand, actually pull up or down and sort of listen and feel for a click on the lower, uh, lower end bearing here. Some side to side play is acceptable. That can of course be measured, uh, but a lot of guys will decide, hey, do I want to rebuild my bottom end or is it good to go? And they'll just pull up and down on the rod. And if they feel no clicking, they will simply install a new top end. And uh, we've all done it and it's not necessarily a bad thing, but you don't really know unless you measure. And next up, we got to get the stator out of here. Now, this does require a special tool. You need a puller, and basically what this does is this uh, nut comes off. It's usually a 17 millimeter, and I haven't checked yet, but yep, this bike is no exception. And once this nut is off, the inside of this stator is also threaded. You go ahead and spin this part of the tool in, and then you tighten this part of the tool, and it will pull the stator out. So we're gonna try that now, and you're gonna wanna hold the connecting rod when you do this, otherwise it will flop around and start beating the piss out of everything. Hopefully this comes off easily. Ah, uh, we got lucky. Nice, that's off. Hopefully this one works. It looks like it's going to, and these are also a reverse thread. This is actually really corroded too, so I'm not making it in very far, but left-hand thread. I'm gonna go ahead and blast this with some WD. Now that we have the tool installed, we can get a large wrench for this, and the appropriate size for this, that is also a 17, so we can use that there. I'm just gonna use a big crescent wrench on this. Basically, you just crank down. You spin this guy in clockwise, do it slowly, and the stator will come right out. Pretty stuck. I'm gonna go ahead and use a ratchet. There we go. Had to break the crust, if you will. And just like that, she's free and full of rust. All right, so we've moved on to a new workspace location. Admittedly, I did not really enjoy the backdrop, and when I'm doing a video, I like to bring the best experience I can for you guys, but uh, joke's on me, jackass, because using the little cart didn't work too well, so now it's gonna be the uh, boneyard. Anyways, I just cannot get over this stand. This thing is so badass. You can freaking 360, another reason why this is a better spot, and uh, of course, we've already gone over the rotation of everything, but man, like, so awesome. Nick, I really appreciate you building me uh, this stand. I did not mention that these are built to order. They start from scratch and Nick over at Metro Lakes uh, builds them for you. So I uh, also got the little logo action, which is an, a nice touch. Anyways, I'm stoked on this thing. Can't wait to use it some more. And it's going to make all projects from here on out quite a bit easier. Anyways, enough rambling. Where were we? We need to get the stator plate out of there, which is connected to all the ignition wires. These simply slide out right here. These look like a 10 millimeter. They are. These are holding the plate into the left case. Get these wires out of the way. I can see there's a little rub there. Take that out. And also you will notice that one hole in here is nice and round. Another hole at the top is sort of oblonged and this is sort of like setting the timing in your car actually. It pivots on the bottom bolt and you can adjust this to uh, set the spark pretty much exactly like timing in a vehicle minus the fact it only has one cylinder. Should be able to take the clutch arm out. Yep, there it is. Basically when you pull your clutch in this is actuated by the cable. The cable goes in here, pull it, rotates, 
pushes things around inside the transmission. So from here, it's really just about getting all the other components off the outside of the engine so that you can then split the cases. You need to go ahead and remove the sprocket guard and case saver, as well as the clutch covers, water pump, and so on. Special tool alert, wrong drawer, that's suspension. We're going to need this bad boy right here. It's a clutch holder tool. So find a couple of grooves to fit into. I've actually had to file these or grind these down in the past to fit different bikes where the baskets did not have wide enough fingers or grooves in them. Anyways, you get to a point where you can very lightly apply pressure on this thing. These are just soft aluminum. They will bend, wiggle and flex and all that. So once you have a grip on that, you can go ahead and blast that nut off without this spinning everywhere. We're getting ready to split the cases. We gotta double check that we have all the bolts out of this thing that might cause something to break when we go to actually split this. We're going to flip the engine around, flip it right side up, and reason being is the transmission is housed in this side of the engine here, so when we roll this, this end down, the transmission won't fly out when we split the cases. Going to need a case splitter. Basically, the idea is to get these spread as broadly as you can to apply even pressure across the entire case service. When this is threaded through the center, it's going to push onto the end of the crankshaft and it's going to lift up this left side case. And I can tell someone's been here already because the end of this crankshaft is actually pretty messed up. Someone did this once before. Looks like they had a bit of a struggle. I'm really surprised to find some of the things uh, wear-wise that we have in this engine considering how nice it looked on the outside. So that's the thing about used bikes. You never really know what you're going to find. And moving on with this application here, we basically need to spread these arms out in such a way that pressure is even. We're going to use this particular size threaded rod and we're going to go down into, I'm going to select this guy here. This is for the sprocket guard or case saver. I'll do one of these bolt holes up here. I'll do another one in the rear here and then we'll get a pretty even spread on the uh, splitter tool. So these will be able to sit flat, these two arms, but since this one is a little bit lower than the other two arms, I'm going to need to put a jam nut on the bottom. That way I don't have have this thing bending or flexing out of proportions while I'm applying pressure because it's going to be a great deal of force. All right, we're ready to go. We're going to go ahead and apply pressure to this top nut here. It's a 17 millimeter also. These are all firmly seated, these threaded rods. We have a nice broad spread on this case splitter tool and I'm not going to use the impact. I'm just going to take my time and start pushing very slowly and just keep an eye on things. If things seem too tight, or really bound up, you may have an issue and just give everything a double check. You don't want to break anything. These cases are super old. I really don't want to break anything. So we're just going to take it easy. Something just kind of gave. You can actually see the cases starting to open. Now the gap is much wider here as it is in the back. And that's because we can't get an arm way back there. So we're going to shock that with the mallet. We want this gap to open up evenly across the board. Otherwise you risk binding and breaking something. It's a precautionary measure. I'm just gonna check everything once over again. Make sure I did not leave a bolt in. Everything looks good. This is pretty typical. You don't ever wanna stick anything like a screwdriver in here and pry open because you might mar up the gasket surface and end up with leaks or damage later after all the work you've done. A little more pressure. Now we have a pretty uneven gap now. And there you have it. A little heat always does the trick. Anytime you are stuck, use heat. Where were we? All right, yeah, it's a pretty successful case split. And with that, we are pretty much free. So I can go ahead and take this tool apart, back the pressure off on this here, loosen up all my bolts and hardware, just sort of deconstruct this whole thing we got going on here. Hopefully nothing comes flying out on the ground. It happens sometimes. And we're good.
transmission looks really good. I don't see any chips or notches or chunks or anything taken out of any of the cogs. It may have been replaced at one point. After all, we can tell that the crank definitely was reused as the end of it was all marred up. Pretty boogered up right there. But that's great, that's a really good sign. Guys, we're getting pretty close here. We got the whole thing pretty much broken down. I went ahead and mounted the case splitter tool to push the crank out of the other side. And I wanted to show that to you, but as soon as I put any pressure on it, actually I barely tapped the thing and it just fell out. The crank just sort of popped out of the case. It wasn't held in very tightly at all, so I won't be able to show you that. But pushing the crank out all the way or the crankshaft assembly all the way is just basically putting the splitter on the other side and forcing it out. Let's see what happens if we just grab this thing. There it is. That took literally no effort at all. So now that these case halves are separated, that's all that really holds the transmission in place. So both shafts with all the gears, shift forks, and the shift drum below, which moves the gears around. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab everything by hand. Basically just gotta get your hands around all this stuff. All we're losing is the gear in the back and a washer. There are tons of washers in these trannies, but I have a good grip on it for the most part. We're gonna lose the final gear, but that's okay. We can slide it right back onto the shaft. Oh, we're losing that too. That is basically a dowel that the shift fork rides on. Set the dowel aside. Have another dowel here that the fork rides on. The gear that didn't come with. And then like I said there's washers everywhere. There's washers almost between every gear in here that act as shims. Gotta keep uh, a good eye on where this stuff's from. Put it back. Guys we're down to the bearings. Both cases just need the bearings removed. All right guys up next we're gonna make some dirt bike stew. I have this gigantic 102 quart pot burner and propane take and to be perfectly honest with you i bought that because i wanted to be able to dye plastics you know something like a tank would need a giant apparatus like that to be able to be put inside of for dyeing but today we're gonna go ahead and just use this thing since i have it and i've sort of given up for now at least on dyeing plastic though it does work if you are wondering we're gonna use it to degunk the cr500 parts I'm just kind of going to go for it on the mixture here. I'm not too worried about it. Like I said, I was told by a race team mechanic and a guy that's fast enough to be on a race team that this is the business right here for cleaning dirt bike parts. So I would say there's about five gallons of water in there now. Get that good and agitated. All right, people always say don't try this at home and this time they might actually be on to something. All right, pot's heating up. All right, our Gigantor pot is heating up. In the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and set the cases aside here. I'm just gonna throw them in and degunk them. I'm not worried about the bearings. We're gonna replace all of them, but I'm gonna loosen up all this gasket material, loosen up all the gunk, start scrubbing, and then once they're pretty much clean to the touch, and I'm not gonna get oil everywhere while taking the bearings out, then I will start taking the bearings out. This is a super handy tool to have right here. It is a blind bearing puller. We're gonna use it for some of the bearings in the cases, and we're also going to use heat. Sometimes if you heat the cases enough, the bearings will just fall out, and so we're gonna use this thing where we need to to basically these collets just go inside of the bearing. This then wedges the collet open and you use the slide hammer and it pulls the bearing out. When these have a little heat behind them, then they really come out. So this makes the job easy. Again, it's called a blind bearing puller. You can use them for linkage, swing arm, pretty much anything you can get the fingers of that collet underneath. Go ahead and clean up the shop a little bit while that pot is heating up also. Dump all this crap. That worked pretty good, just draining right into the tank. Probably drives some guys crazy, but I wanted to give it a shot. I'll be able to spray this out with a brake cleaner and put it right back where it came from. All right, here goes nothing. One thing right off the bat I like about this solution is that you can put your hands in it. It's just dish soap and simple green. So maybe over time it won't be the best for your skin, but we're not dealing with harsh stuff like acetone or the brake cleaner, which I'm always wearing gloves for. We've only been in here for a couple of minutes, so I don't expect much yet. But that actually already helped with this, to be honest. Man, that's the ticket right there. Crud just falls away. It pretty much degreases instantly. It's awesome. Let's go wash this thing off. Yeah, that did a great job. No gunk on the bottom anymore. Killer. I love it. So there you have it, guys. Simple Green and Dawn dish soap. Let's get into those bigger pieces, since that's where all the bearings are anyways. Much nicer to handle these cases, not slimy, covered in tranny oil and dirt and all that, obviously. So 
a lot better in there. Good enough to get the bearings out without having trans oil all over everything. I think I mentioned it earlier, but interestingly enough, I was giving this guy a scrub and the cases are nice and warm. The bearing just fell out. I was giving everything a, a wipe down and had the case facing this direction. And like I said earlier, some of the bearings will just come flying out when you get the case uniformly warm. This was no exception. It just flew right out. So one less bearing to do. I got to find that little sucker. The water is pretty dang hot it's almost too hot so had to shut the burner down that's great i should probably just take this over to the table and whack these things all out right now these cases are nice and warm we may be able to drive some of these out without the pooler that's not one of them this guy might go though there you go right out cases are nice and hot from the water that guy came right out no big deal a lot of the bearings or not a lot of but some of the bearings will actually have these retaining tabs so don't try smashing a bearing out from the back side without checking the other side for these first this guy will use the heat see if i can get lucky one more time while this case is warm pulled down considerably though in the last few minutes so we'll see oh, there you go i just barely touched it with my hands no hammer strike, fell right out. Awesome. I have to get the seal out of there also. Don't want to dig into the wall of this guy here. Just take your time. There you go. Get the old seal out. The spring fell off the seal. No big deal. That's going in the trash. Now we can heat this sucker up from this side, flip it back over, drive it out. I want you guys to be careful though. When you touch this case, it is going to be hot. So make sure you don't burn yourself. Another thing you don't want to get the bearing hot. You're trying to get the aluminum case around the bearing to expand. So keep the direct flame off the bearing as much as you can. Go ahead and try heating it from the backside also. There she goes. A little leftover engine oil here. So the bearings I have knocked out, I'm gonna go ahead and throw them in this bag. God forbid I can't get them because this bike's too old. I doubt it, but you never know. So since we did have them in water, I'm just gonna make sure that we expel that water. All right, now we're getting into the last case, the second case, and we have a bit of a different predicament on our hands this time. That would be these bearing retainers that have a large Phillips screw holding them in. Now they are generally covered in Loctite. Once you take these out, they're trash, and you can't just use any old screwdriver to get these out. More importantly, if you use the wrong size with the right tool, you're still just going to chip off these edges. So the tool we're using is an impact screwdriver. Basically, when you strike this with a hammer, it will collapse and then impact the screw in one direction or the other depending on how you set it and you can do that by just turning this guy here as mentioned you also need the right Phillips tip this is a regular number two Phillips tip where you'd find just about anywhere else on the bike that had a Phillips screw but you need the number three these are the big boys right here so you're gonna go ahead and make sure that that fits you can see clearly if you were to put the number two in here that it does not fit properly it's a little loose and do not use that so number three Phillips all of the time I've been in this situation it's the number three Phillips inside once you've set this tool in the right direction there's only one thing left to do and that is take the the impact screwdriver, hammer with a little weight behind it, and go ahead and give this a whack. You also need to be on a flat surface. As you can see, we have different tiers here. This is a little higher. So I'm gonna sit it flat on the edge here. Set this guy up. You can use a little heat if you want to, and give this a nice whack. And most of the time, in a couple hits, it will get the job done. Starting to spin for sure. So that's how you get those out. Again, you can save these for reference, but don't reuse them. Move on to the next screw. Make sure everything's still flat. There she goes, she's starting to spin. And that's it. So you gotta get those retainers out in that fashion. Then you can continue with the heat and pounding these out with a socket. Get a little heat. There she is. This guy down here is going to require the use of the blind bearing puller. So we got to find a collet that will fit that. This one looks about right. No, a little too big. Move down to the next smallest. And basically, this is just going to go inside the inner race. And the teeth on the back of the collet, you hear it? 
It's gonna grab on the back. Then you just tighten these two up. I don't think I need to wrench tighten these. Had pretty good retention. Then I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of heat on the back side of this. A little bit, oh, fell right out. <laughs> Didn't even need to use it, so perfect. Right on, save me some time. Man, I am really trying to show you guys how to use this damn blind bearing puller, but it's not working out so far. It's been a little too easy. We can do it on this guy down in here, maybe. Nice, I had a collet that actually fit in there. It was the largest one, so we got lucky. Maybe I'm gonna get to show you how to do this after all. So at this point, you're gonna take the slide hammer, screw the end of it, the threaded part here, down into the collet, and basically at that point, you can then use this slide hammer to eject this bearing. Like so. Guys, that's pretty much it. Before you, a broken down CR500 engine. Transmission's in killer shape. I don't think we're gonna need to do anything with that. Guys, could you imagine if I still had to do the frame and the suspension? I don't know what I was smoking this morning, but this took plenty of time, so I was a little overzealous. You know, I was very shocked to see the kind of damage I found inside of this thing, despite how nice the bike looked when we first picked it up. It's in gorgeous condition, it still has factory warning labels on the fender and the airbox cover and the Showa stickers on the shock and fork. Like, you can't find this stuff and they're in killer shape. So to open the engine up and see, you know, the uh, clutch basket nut pretty marred up and then see, you know, the end of the crankshaft was all mushroomed off, another collar was starting to sort of deburr around the end. So I guess it's true what they say, you can't judge a book by his cover. Although for a 1990, I think we're still getting off pretty light so everything came apart real nice for the most part no big hang-ups or surprises no cracked cases no rust inside so that's all good news I think it's still you know best case scenario for what we're doing that concludes today's video I just wanted to break down this engine show you how that's done for the most part of course there's always more but I hope today was helpful I hope this gets you guys into trying your own builds and really you can see you don't need very many special tools and I'll recap what they are so the only special tools I used today were the clutch holder the impact screwdriver the stator puller the blind bearing puller and the case splitter you don't need the engine stand that's such a luxury I've done it without that plenty of times if you have one you're gonna love it but it's not completely necessary so don't let that stop you. In terms of hand tools, I was 10, 12, 14, and eight millimeter. I don't think I used any other sockets except for the large ones that I drove the bearings out with. The big hot pot, that was pretty cool. I've never done that before. I figured I have this gigantic thing sitting around. I, I may as well try it. And much to my surprise, getting the cases just warm enough, some of the bearings were just falling out. So that was pretty cool. I tried like hell to get the shot with that blind bearing puller for you. We finally got one at the very end. So next, I gotta box this stuff up. I gotta get it sent out to Adam in Canada. Adam Millar, MRE. He's gonna build us a fire breather. I've never ridden the CR500 So this is gonna be very interesting when we're all done and eventually we're gonna to need to tear into that turd right there The 04 CR250. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I appreciate the hell out of you for watching Thanks for all the support. Thanks for making this channel grow. I'm gonna keep this thing rolling I look forward to more videos I can shoot for you guys if you guys enjoyed today's video think about subscribing I'll be doing many more of these. I got a lot of building left to do smash that like button for any of the pros out there Feel free to leave some constructive criticism as well and if any of you guys have any questions at all, feel free to comment below. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys. I will see you very soon with more builds. This is the CR500 for Dirt Bike Magazine, Project King King. <laughs>